Somebody give you guys an update on our busted silo. Let the dryer run. <laughs> so we got the harvester all hooked up and filling. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. And today, just got up to the farm, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Happy coffee, no one's up here yet. I'm actually kind of surprised because usually Nathan has chores done by now. He just slept in. He overslept his alarm, so I'll give him a pass. But anyway, I'm gonna check oil on the truck, start it up, go grab my stuff, and then start moving corn. We're good on oil, start it up. Let that thing warm up. I'm gonna go, go clock in, go grab my stuff, and start filling it up. Man. This thing's cold. You guys have any reason or any idea of why this thing's just pulsing? I don't know why this old. It's an empty three. It's a 3406C motor. See this freight liner. And we're just about full. We're just about gonna move. This thing will probably smoke like this for about 20 minutes or so. About however long it takes to load this truck. She's just a cold running beast. What can we say? Loading her up. There's the sleepy head. Just gotta load it up. We'll head over. It's still cold, that's for sure. We're gonna head over next door. I'm not even gonna tarp it. We're just going literally across the driveway. Then we'll dump it into the drive over. It's either going into the old wet bin or the harvest store. I'm not sure. I'm guessing the old wet bin though. We'll find out. She's a little smoky. And it's a little damp. So our old drive over, it's a souk up. Uh, line up, drive it over it. Now you guys might be thinking we're doing this a little backwards, doing it in reverse, because usually you want the, the handle on the side of the um, gauge. It's pretty hard to get around there loaded, so that's the way we're doing it. Now I'll walk around, go start up the leg, go start up the drive over, and I'll slowly increase it. Because it's a little dewy this morning, we didn't have any frost, so it shouldn't be too bad, but it's good to let things run for a little bit. Run for a little bit, a lighter load just to burn the, the dew and stuff off. But when I get going, I watch that gauge. I only pulling about 30 amps, no more than that. So yeah, we're going into this bin. It's our old wet bin. Card to this video right here where we uh, we actually moved this bin over here and put the new one up. I'll explain that a little bit later. That's a pretty light load to start out with. I'm gonna move forward so I can get that in the center. Kinda see it pulling out the center there. Right now we're reading 25 amps. What that is, is that is basically just a gauge on the motor that's driving the leg. That's just basically telling me how much power it's drawing. Cause that's just a gauge that we'll use so we don't overload it. Like if we put 35 amps worth of power through that, we'll probably overload the motor. All right, 30, 31 amps. I'm gonna close it down just a little bit. We're either gonna overload the motor or this leg is only rated for so long. The buckets can only hold so much. So if I stop, start hearing stuff kind of fall around, fall down the backside, basically because the grain can't get taken away because it's just undersized, that's when I'll have to slow it down. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit, about 31 amps. I wanna be right at 30, especially for this first load. Somebody give you guys an update on our busted silo. So this is our neighbor's bin site. Those you guys don't know, card to this video right here. About two years ago during the winter, we filled this thing up. We like to fill the silo up every year. We converted it over to grain and it works well. It holds like 15,000 bushels. So we, why wouldn't we use it? But we came out of here one day hauling grain and all of a sudden there's a kink right there. And we rushed to get all this grain out of there. We got it out of there below the kink. And we think what happened is we started pulling it out. And if you don't pull grain out of the center of a bin or a silo or anything, it's gonna put an uneven load because these walls are very thin on these bins. So if you pull out uneven, you'll kink it just like that. And that's what we think we did. We pulled out uneven. We didn't pull out from the center. So we, did, we rushed to get all this grain out and we just left it as is. We filled it up the next year, not plump full, but we filled it up and nothing happened. Kink didn't get worse. We made sure to take it out of the center. And <clears throat> it is what it is. We're not sure if we're gonna fill it up again this year. It looks like we're getting it cleaned out, so we might. Eventually, in the next probably five years or so, our five-year plan is to make this a nice 
beet soybean hub. So for example, there's a 12,000 bushel bin, 12,000 bushel bin, 5,000 bushel bin, about another 12,000 bushel bin, and then we'll take this silo down and put up another 24 foot diameter by however that is tall, put up a massively tall but narrow bin. That way we can, because you can kind of see our leg goes right up this, so we need to have some sort of structure. Put up another massively tall bin that holds like 20,000. Then we'll have, I don't know, about 50, 60,000 in storage here, which would be awesome for like soybeans or anything. So that is the plan for this silo. Eventually that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna take it down and put up a big bin about the size of that. But for right now, we just uh, make you with what it is because it still works well. It's paid off, that's the biggest thing. And it works for us. So it looks like my front hopper is about full or empty. You guys remember a couple of videos back, I talked about how our spray trailer is only going to be about 2,000 gallons big. Well, we have this thing sitting over here. This nice 2,500 gallon tank could act as our surge tank. I could always have the hose going to this thing, keeping it filled. And if I'm spraying like high capacity and need a lot of water, 2,000 gallon tanks is only gonna last me like three tank loads if I continue filling it. So what I could do is I could use this as a surge tank and <clears throat> suck out of it. Basically just pull the flatbed in here, flip the motor around, flip two valves and suck onto the tank instead of pull instead of pulling out. But the problem is this tank is good, but this base is shot. So we wouldn't, I don't know if we'd trust 2,500 gallons of uh, water on this kind of rusty shot out base. So any of you guys know in Eastern Iowa, somewhere around there where we could get a, um, essentially a cone or a funnel made for a, a tank base. This is, I'm not sure where we got it, any details. This thing has been, been around longer than I've been alive, but the welds are rusted. We just need a new one. So any thoughts on where we could get another one? It's just a simple cone bottom base for a plastic tank. So any comments guys down below, I really appreciate it. any leads. And we're just about empty with that first load. It's gonna take like an hour round trip because this is a slow dumper. We can only do like 3000 bushel an hour through this leg. So it's gonna take a while, but I mean, it's paid off. We can hopefully get maybe 50 cents on carrying this train over. We're hoping so 50 cents times 12,000 bushel. That's quite a bit of money. It would be hard to make this corner loaded and get on there straight. So that's why we just go in from the opposite side. It's not that much. It's not that big of a deal. Nathan's feeding cattle down at Jerry's and I'm going to keep moving grain. Curtis and Pat are probably just getting up to the farm and we'll see what's the plan for today. I'm hoping we can harvest this afternoon, but we got a half inch of rain two days ago. So we'll see. We're loading out of the bin. We got a sump right in the center. Cause if you guys remember, you got to pull out what I just said earlier. You got to pull out of the center of these bins because these walls aren't very thick. So you got to keep the load even. So we're pulling out of the center with a truck with an auger that's under the floor, dumping out right here, and going up into the truck. Let's go uh, climb up there and see how full we are. The friends almost cored out, so basically we almost got a cone all the way at the top. That side was actually running over the roof, so uh, yeah, we had this been pretty full. Matt's got the 656 that's hooked up on the uh, small feeder wagon, the old one. He's having fuel issues. He's basically, there's crap stuck up in the fuel tank. So he's having to basically stick a wire up there to kind of get it free, because it's not getting any fuel to the engine. So oh, this is uh, load number two, let's get her done. Just been rolling along, this is load number three for me today. I mean, it's just pretty pretty cut and dry. Fill it up over there, drive it over here, fill it, um, empty it out into that bin. That bin, see that nice new silver ring? So the reason we got a new weapon is because that kinked a couple years ago. We left it kink for two years and it started getting worse and worse. So we tore that bin down, moved it over here, put a new ring where it kinked. That's that silver ring. So we're right halfway up that silver wing right now. So we're a little over halfway done. So I'll just keep doing this and turn stuff on. We got some interesting stuff going on. Nathan's gonna hook a wagon on and haul wagons over so we'll be able to move grain twice as fast. Nathan's got the T7210 loader tractor on this Brent 644 wagon and that wagon is full. So we're gonna be hauling corn. He's gonna haul probably 650 at a time. I'm gonna haul about 800 or so just because I don't wanna get too far in front of them. Otherwise he's just gonna be waiting. It's going to be more efficient if we kind of have a pro approximately the same time filling up and we always have the weakest link moving. And the weakest link in this operation is the leg. 
So if we can always have something dumping, then we're going to be the most efficient. Pat just got the dryer going too, so the wet bin is plump, plump full. So I mean, we can let it run for 24 hours. This thing will dry about 60, 600 bushel an hour. I feel like we could turn that up, but that's a topic for another day. But it's going to run 600 bushel an hour. There's about 13,000 bushels in this wet tank, so it'll take about 20-something hours to do. We'll let it run all day. We'll probably start combining into it this afternoon, hopefully. Let's walk up and check and see how much uh, the dryer pulled out. Just about fell. Oh, we got quite a bit pulled out of here. Plus, I ran the dryer a little bit longer after we quit the other day. Car to that video right here, because I thought we quit the dryer, the white bin was plumb full, but it's not anymore. So you can kind of see right here, they ran it for two and a half hours the other day. Not sure when, but you can kind of see this is, you know, minus one, two, three, minus how many hours ago the dryers ran. So it's just getting going right now. It's coming out at 18.5 moisture and 52 degrees on the temp. Coming out at 15.3 moisture and 60 degrees on the temp. So once that gets moving, uh, the temperature will rise up a little bit and the moisture should drop because we're targeting for 14.2. I don't know if I've ever said this, so, but what I'm talking about when I say these moisture is just the percentage of the corn kernel itself that is percentage of water. So if it's at 15% water, 85% starch and whatnot. So the less water you have, the more starch content, the higher value that it is for the grain, for the uh, end, end user. But if you have like 30% corn, which is what it starts out at, where some guys start picking, then it's a lot more water in there. It's less value for the end user. So it's kind of a balance. We like to store our grain around 14, 5% moisture. That's because we get a little bit of a buffer point. And the end users like to don't dock you for anything under 15. So if you got 14, 9% corn, you're good. But if you got 15, one, they'll take a couple cents off per bushel or a half a cent or whatever it is. Above 15, they're paying more water than, they're paying for more water as opposed to starch or like the, the, the usable product. So therefore they're not gonna pay you as much. Fast forward a couple hours, still doing the same thing. Still loading into the leg. And the bottom indicator's on, the top one's about ready to come on. So I'll for sure be able to put the front hopper in and then we'll see how much the back hopper I'll be able to put in. That top indicator just tripped up there so Nathan's gonna climb the bin. And he's basically just gonna watch it and he's gonna wave me off when we're uh, basically filled up. Cause I'll be able to, the front hopper just about empty. I'll pull the back and sit out here and wait for him to tell me to stop. This 12,000 bushel bin is full. We put 4,000 in last night. Then Nathan and I put another eight in this morning. Just shut the leg off. So now I'll pull the semi back over and not sure what we're gonna do. I got probably 200 bushel of dry corn in there. So gotta figure out that. But right now the hawk has a plane. I didn't realize it. I knew they were on today, but I thought they were at 2.30 for some reason. And they're getting smoked 17, nothing. Awesome. A Little bit left, not much. Probably 200 bushel. Let me just take it back over there for now. And yep. We'll eat lunch, see what dad wants to do with it. Sounds good. Good enough. Let the dryer on. <laughs> Ouch, I've never done that before. Mm, just shut the door on my thumb. Wow, that hurt. Mm. Anyway, like I was saying, we'll let the dryer run for a bit. We're gonna go grab some lunch and I am gonna go cry a little bit. Ouch, just kidding, but that actually did hurt. <laughs> Idiot. Now we're loading out of the chute because this stuff's gonna be going to the harvest store. And the harvest store doesn't have a floor, so basically we can't get air through it. So we don't wanna pull out of the bins that we have been, that west bin because it's uh, the corn that will come out is hot right now because it just came out of the dryer. So we got to pull out of this, this east bin that's got cool corn. So that's what we're doing. So I just switched the leg over that thing. So instead of dumping down there, we'll dump in here. Yeah. Definitely not OSHA approved. That's all right. Tell you what, it's a pretty day. There's a leg, we got two pipes. One going to that one, one going to here. Got it switched over, now we'll dump, dump some grain. So we got the harvest store all hooked up and filling. We got about an 800 bushel in there already. We'll fill up one more load out of this one. So we're gonna put about 3000 bushel on the bottom of dry, dry cool corn. Then we're gonna move back over to that auger to keep pulling out of that west bin. As I've mentioned before, this is our side draw. All it does is just do, it unloads via gravity. You got a bin like this, 
It only does the top triangle, just anything that gravity will flow and slide right out. We like to use this because there's no extra auger. Anytime you run a grain through an auger, it, makes it, it breaks it, makes it a little bit more dirty. So if you can do this as much as possible, you're golden. So I got filled up, that side draw is also much, much quicker than any auger that we own. So I was able to get over here and Nathan's still dumping. So I'll help him dump. He's still got a little ways to go, I can tell. Cause you can still see grain in his window. Let's see how full we are. Almost up that way. Hey guys, first of all, I just want to say I genuinely appreciate you guys taking 15 minutes out of your day to make it to the end of the video. I do appreciate all you guys watching, all the comments, all the likes, all the interactions. Thank you guys so much. This channel will be nothing without you. But I do have a question. What do you guys think? Was this a pretty big risk that we took filling up that harvest store? Because I mean, 15,000 bushels, what that thing will hold, you know, if that thing falls down, we're going to lose majority of that. So we'll just say we lose 12,000 bushels at six dollar corn is what i sold the load for last night so that's seventy two thousand dollars that we're playing with right there so i don't know i think it'll i think it'll be fine but this is the first time we filled it up plump full so we'll we'll see but i'm just hoping we can get it out here the next month anyway don't want to take too much of your time i'm gonna split this video up into two because it was getting too long it's been like 32 minutes long i'm gonna stop around one thank you guys so much take care take it easy stay safe and ta-ta for now see you guys